One of the ways in which the government has tried to convince uh, the public that shale gas development is a good thing is to suggest that it's going to bring down consumer bills. Well, at least that's how they started off trying to convince uh, the consumer. Um, the idea that significant drilling would uh, mean we'd have a lot more of our own gas and it would be cheaper. And look, ultimately, what does this all mean for someone watching this? It means their gas bill is cheaper, the cost of heating their home is cheaper. That's why it's so important. Now, this is in part based on what has happened in the United States, but it misunderstands the nature of the gas market in the U.S. relative to the U.K. Uh, because the, U the U.S. gas market, or North American gas market, is essentially self-contained um, with a limited amount of imports coming in now. Um, and it's gas-to-gas -gas competition in a self-contained market. It's basic economics 101. There is supply versus demand. We've had a situation of very rapid growth in supply relatively stagnant de demand because of recession, too much gas, too little demand, a low price. Um, and that low price has brought significant economic benefits to the US and it's also resulted in, in gas replacing coal and power generation. So the politicians, the Prime Minister and the Chancellor of the Exchequer in particular think, well, we'll have some of that please. Well, this is what's happened in the United States and it's made it a real success in the US. And I want us to get on board this change that is doing so much good and bringing so much benefit to North America. I want us to benefit from it here as well. The problem is that our gas market is very different. Uh, we do have gas to gas competition, but our gas market is wide open. We get our natural gas from, from our own continental shelf fields. We get it from the Norwegian fields. We get it through the interconnectors from the continental gas market. Um, and increasingly also imported as liquefied natural gas LNG. And so our gas price reflects competition between all these different gas sources. So in a sense, our gas price is influenced on the one hand by the price in continental Europe, which in turn is linked to oil. Uh, oil, oil indexed, and also to the global LNG price, which again is linked to oil. Um, and so it would take an awful lot of domestic production to actually create a situation where the, the international influence on our gas price was, was diminished. And in actual fact, when we were self-sufficient in gas, we didn't see very low prices in the way that they've seen them in the United States. I mean, even Lord Brown, you know, the former head of BP and the chairman of Quadrilla, uh, went on the record earlier this year making it quite clear that he did not think that shale gas development in the UK would bring down the gas price. And it's interesting to see that the Chancellor has, has stopped saying that shale gas will, development in the UK will reduce gas prices. I think it's finally been understood that it's a bit more complicated than that. And so the tendency now is to emphasis, emphasis, put emphasis on energy security, that the more, of the more gas we can produce ourselves, the better. But one would have to ask is, does it make sense to produce domestic shale gas if it's more expensive than importing gas, say, from continental Europe, which may have come from Russia, or as LNG that might have come from the Middle East? But the bottom line is that we're unlikely to see the scale of development that's going to mean a significant reduction in, in gas prices to consumers in the UK. The other side of the argument then from the politicians, and again from, from number 10 and number 11, is that <coughs> shale gas development will create significant employment opportunities. Shale is important for our country. It could bring 74,000 jobs. Again, we don't really know because we don't know what the scale of commercial development is going to be. We don't know what the technological solution will be in the, in the case of shale gas drilling in the UK, how many pads, how many wells, how the fracking operations will be carried out. We don't know the answer to those questions. There have been two studies which have tried to come up with an estimate. I mentioned already the Amex study, which was funded by, by DEC, the Department of Energy and Climate Change, and an, a previous study produced by the Institute of Directors funded by Quadrilla. Now, the, the, the number of 70,000 jobs, which uh, David Cameron quotes, comes from the Quadrilla report, which was funded by the industry. Interestingly, the AMEC report for DEC says that the number of jobs could be between 16,000 and 32,000. 74,000 jobs over... At best, half the amount that the Institute of Directors report is saying. But it's interesting that the Prime Minister chooses to ignore the government report with the lower number and goes with the Institute of Directors report, which everyone understands is, is sponsored by the industry. One of the other things that the AMEC report revealed was that in the case of Quadrilla's operations outside of Blackpool, only 17% of the jobs went to local people. But I actually believe it's when these wells go ahead, when people start to see the benefit, they will see that it's quite right that this is part of our long-term economic plan. 
Uh, so you can imagine you're going to have these teams of, of, of workers, drilling companies, fracking companies, um, coming and going, moving across the country, carrying out these operations, taking their crews with them um, with a limited amount of, of impact perhaps locally. The other term that's banded around in the United States in relation not just to shale gas but also shale oil is this notion of energy independence. That, the, that shale gas development will somehow make the UK independent, not, not dependent on gas imports. Well, from everything I've said so far, you can you probably understand that my answer to that is simply no, it won't. It's unlikely to be significant enough to make a significant difference to our import dependence. It may not even <coughs> compensate for the fall in offshore production in the North Sea. And certainly that's the view in the European Commission, more generally looking across Europe, is that shale gas production at best could compensate for, for falling domestic production, but it won't reduce the increase in import dependence. 